Australia's freight task overall is expected to double in the next few years as the economy further expands. You cannot put all of that on road or even coastal shipping. So rail must play its role if we are going to meet that huge expansion in the freight task. In one sense, we are just in time in saving uh, rail, which was faced with massive collapse, non-commercial operation, and closure of even more track. Freight Australia has replaced a loss-making, taxpayer-funded railway called V-Line into a modern, up-to-date and uh, financially viable transportation company called Freight Australia. Just in the two years when we acquired the business, it had a turnover of $100 million. Today, its turnover is over $200 million. So we've doubled the size of the income stream of the company. We have studied the direct economic impact on the expenditures of the state on the previous operations of V-Line. The direct economic benefits we've assessed at being around $90 million a year. Last year, we hauled almost 9 million tonnes worth of freight uh, that is exported overseas and that helps to contribute to Australia's economy. Uh, we're the people who haul the entire grain crop in Victoria, for example, and we were in fact hauling about half a million tonne of grain a month to port, uh, making sure it got there efficiently and quickly and at the lowest possible cost. The key element in Freight Australia's success is being customer focused. We can respond very quickly to a customer's need. That is something that's very difficult to do when you're a government organisation. Freight Australia has been fantastic to us in the past year because when, if, we want to use, if we want to use road, we're looking at probably another couple of hundred dollars extra per container to road up because we also have to include the empty return bag. Whereas with the rail, we're taking the container up empty. We get that charge, but it's not half as much as it's going to cost by road. So we're then saving a lot of money for the customer and in turn, Freight Australia get the business and we get the business. The customer writes the cheque and that's where the income's derived from. We're not a subsidised organisation. We don't get government handouts. As a result, it's critically important that we listen to the client and respond very quickly. ACT is a rail freight forwarder, and we sent up to three trains a week to Perth. We had a problem, we couldn't fuel in the desert, so Freight Australia came up with a system where we could fuel locomotives without having to stop. We actually take the fuel with us, so not only do we save time, but we also buy the best fuel price in the best location on the best day. It's a very dynamic process, but it's meant time savings and fuel cost savings. It's not just about being happy. It's not just about being on time. It's about innovation, and about change, and it's about continual improvement. Effectively, the first thing you have to do is listen to the clients and understand their requirements and then develop a tailor-made solution. But that really depends on people. And the critical issue in our organisation is people. We are absolutely delighted that not only have we been able to offer our people a secure future, but we've actually improved the number of people that we've been able to employ from some 530 people to over 700 people today. Well, basically, you've got a direct line to the management regime from marinas downwards. So. You know, if there's any issues, you can talk to any of the managers um, and basically get the issue in hand, at hand, dealt with fairly quickly. That's that's a normal process. So I think it's it's because of the open door approach. Well, the rail industry needs a lot of people to work. It's not just a few people in the office. It's all those people out there. Over one third of our organisation are people who drive trains, and effectively, uh, we need those people, and we need new people to be skilled in those tasks. It's the first time certainly in Victoria in many, many years that new people are actually being trained to be diesel maintainers, engine men, shunters and all these type of activities in our business. At the end of the day it's about freight obtaining uh, productivity 
and it's about our membership being happy. In effectively just over two and a half years, we've doubled this business. We'd like to double it again and then double it again after that. But that can only happen with investment. We're happy to invest in appropriate rolling stock, locomotives, wagons, uh, people. We can't invest, however, in infrastructure we don't own. The railway lines on which we operate are in poor condition. Regrettably, we've got 19th century rail infrastructure in the 21st century. Regional Australia absolutely demands effective transport links. Government should invest in rail, especially in country Victoria, because it's very important for all those people in the whole of Victoria to be serviced properly. Road only services a portion. Rail, especially Freight Australia, services the whole of country Victoria. We would never get the harvest in. Four million tonne of year grain per year comes in by rail, goes to Geelong and to Portland. That all comes in by rail, and Freight Australia do a great job on that. Also with containers. 80% of all containers in country Victoria go into Melbourne, all by rail from specific hubs around country Victoria. Road can't supply that service. Historically speaking, governments have viewed rail as a diminishing uh, transport mode and have invested very heavily in roads not at the expense of rail, but at the exclusion of rail. And although there's been a recent increase in government funding in rail, but I believe that that should increase and that government should view the rail network the same way they look at our national highway network. Effectively, every time a tonne of freight is moved by rail, it uses one third the amount of fuel than a tonne of freight removed by road. So very clearly, greenhouse gas emissions are reduced by two thirds. That has effects in terms of the air we breathe, holes in the ozone layer, and the environment generally. In addition to that, by taking freight off the road and putting it on the railway lines, we have less trucks and therefore more room on our highways for ordinary motorists. Road freight contributes disproportionately to the number of fatalities and accidents on roads and that any move from road to rail will have a positive impact on those statistics. The solution to transport is not road or rail, it is road with rail. Effectively, it is unreasonable to think that we can put a railway line into every supermarket. The union between Wakefield Transport and Freight Australia is that we provide the, the road end of the business and they provide the line haul side of the business and it enables Wakefields and Freight Australia to capture more freight. They have um, the train that runs regularly for us and we can load from 30 containers to 100 containers a day. I suppose we provide solutions to our customers that meet their needs and exceed their needs that road or rail couldn't do separately. From Nildura to the port of Melbourne, 10 years ago, next to zero containers moving by rail, next to zero. Today, from the Wakefield Yards uh, just near Mildura, thousands of containers moving by rail and saving the highways and congestion around Melbourne by the fact that Freight Australia, as one operator, uh, has really linked in with a freight border from the Sunraysia, a big export zone, and making it work. Our vision for the future of rail in Australia is to run fast, reliable, efficient train services across this country that transfer a lot of traffic away from road to rail where it's appropriate. The future partnership must involve a sensible level of cooperation and coordination between rail operators, freight forwarders and government, state and federal and even local government. Uh, this uh, must include giving rail a fair go, helping with track upgrading given the amount of money which is poured into our highways and freeways and all. But above all else, rail is here to stay and if given a fair chance, will make a huge contribution to the future economic well-being of Australia. Freight Australia's vision is to have rail, road and government working closely together to deliver the best transportation solutions for Australia and Freight Australia seeks to be an active participant and partner in that future.